Old Gold Club. Powered by Wolverhampton Building Supplies. With Mikey Burrows and Chris Iwalumo. Welcome along to the Old Gold Club. I'm Mikey Burrows alongside me, Chris Iwalumo. This is the new home of the Old Gold Club as well. Our new permanent base you can see around we'll put a little video up on social media to show you exactly what this place looks like our guest this week the first in our new home spent 10 years at Molyneux making 334 appearances making him joint 27th on the all-time list he also scored nine goals as well which we can't forget welcome to the club I'm sure it's called Lee that. Naylor <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid it was only nine my friend ah, I see no, that's lies. <laughs> honestly, I think I honestly scored more. Well, no, you got you can't just say I scored more. Yeah, but got, I've got the worst memory. I've got, got the worst memory on the table. Yeah, you have. Something on the table to see. Yeah, there you go. See, this is part of the problem in getting Lee on this because Lee has the worst memory. <laughs> Yeah. Of any footballer I've ever met. I might need met. to get it checked out, like, actually on a serious note. <laughs> I mean, is this just from heading the ball too much? Mate, some of the balls I've played, it could be, yeah. They might have tactics back in the day, yeah. Yes. So this could be interesting um, as to what you actually remember. I was in the era, don't forget, of when keepers had to pick the ball up and boot it. Well, yeah, I mean... The, there was no throwing out, kicking off the floor... Low driven, yeah, playing out from the low, back. Low driven. It was all <laughs> bang it up to the other defenders. <laughs> head it. I got you, Ashley. What what position were you when you started? Striker. So it's good and goals are just part and parcel, isn't it? Yes. So how did you end up at left back? It happens a lot. So this. I was just had a left foot. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And I was fast. Because at what point? That's why. I, to be fair, well, okay. So at ten years, ten years of age, I came into Wolves. Uh, as a schoolboy, I left at 12 because I, I wasn't enjoying it. Uh, came back when I was like 13, 14, started seriously knuckled down. Um, I was a striker, scoring goals, by the way, like on a regular. So it was, you know, had no reason to push me back. At 15, they started trying me out at left midfield, started putting me back to left back. And I was like, oh my word, what's going on here? Didn't like it, but I stuck at it. Um, ended up offering me a YTS and there you go so in effect I was, I've was i been here for like 15, 16 <laughs> years yeah yeah well, did he push you back then because of the other strikers that were in the team well we had Mark Jones who <coughs> who went to the England schools yeah he was his strike partner of Michael Owen so but at the same time me and Mark Jones grew up together in the same uh, school in the district. Yeah. And I used to bang more goals, so how, was that, how did that happen? Um, Robbie Keane would have been around at the time, wouldn't he? Yeah, well, Rob, Rob came in the, exactly the same time as when I came in in YTS. Uh, yeah, me, my mum used to bring us both in because he used to live out in Wensfield. So my mum used to be a uh, little taxi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was good. And then he got his, he passed his test early doors and he started doing donuts outside my house. And, that, <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> you see, the, the, the academy, uh, it's, it's massive for, for any player, you know, for the grounding of it. Now, you, you you knew the ability that you had. You knew the, Did you know the potential? You knew that you were one of the better players uh, not, at that not, age or no, not? It, it was weird, like, because at 15, 16, yeah, I knew I was, I was a good striker. Yeah. <laughs> but... When they started putting me left back, I didn't really know too much about where I'd be or where where I could go. Never seen myself as a left back. Right. Um, but it was Rob Kelly at the time, who uh, who decided to put me put me back there and seen something in me that I didn't see, obviously, because um, you know I was scoring goals. It wasn't like I, I had like a three month spell where I didn't score goals. I was scoring goals every week. Yeah. Uh, so it was a bit weird to me and it was all new, but I rolled with it and Cause ended up being gifted a, a YTS, which was massive to me. Like, to get handed out willy-nilly now, but at the time, it was such a massive thing to me. That's it. Usually, I think it was always there and you'd, you'd, <clears throat> there'd probably be maybe two, three players that got offered a YTS yeah. in a group of, what, 20, 25? Yeah. yeah. So when 
when you come in, they pull you into the office and say, look, we're going to give you the YTS. Yep. Talk to us about that moment because that, that must be a proud moment. Yeah, I at mean, the club. yeah, they, they pulled me in and... I was, it expe- it, well, was it expected? Did you, did no, I didn't expect. Right. Didn't expect it at all. Even though you knew where you stood? Even though I, I, right. I, know, I, I knew I was a good footballer. I've, I was... I broke a lot of records when I was young. Yeah. Doing things, and I thought, oh, I must be good. Uh, I had a decent left foot. Some call it a wand. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. No. So, so, when, so, <laughs> so when they take you into the office? No, so they took me into the office and I was with my mum. Um, it was me, me, my two brothers and my mum um, growing up. And my mum came in with me and and they said, we, you know, you've been doing great this season. You've done this, you've done that. And says we're gonna offer you a, a YTS and pff, just overjoyed, just overwhelmed by the the situation. It, the, just... it, it, it strikes me as amazing that you effectively went from that because the the t- period of time from that to being thrown into the first team, yeah, is nothing. No, well, uh, this is uh, the thing was is my first year YTS. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you just. I don't know what what you what you expect. I don't. I didn't know. What, I wasn't expecting anything. I'll be honest. With my first year of YTS, I I didn't think too much of it. And uh, as I said, I went through the season, done well. I done well. I didn't um, played in a some good resi games at the time. And then come my second second year YTS, just something just clicked in me, and. I just I found it easy. It, 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 I was just going through games and it was just so so easy, and ended up getting like four, five, six goals by December time as a wing back because that's that's how I got I got learning my trade as a wing back. We played wing backs at the time, and I scored f- five or six goals by November December December time, um, and now in fact. October time, sorry, because that's when I got chucked in. Yeah, October into the first time. Yeah, so so October, sorry, and I played a reserve game out here against Middlesbrough, and it. When I say it was the best game I've ever had, it, it just everything came off. It was fine. It was, I was ducking inside, spraying balls with my right peg. I never really used my right peg ever <laughs> in my life. I sprayed I sprayed a seventy yard ball with my right peg. To the other wing back, put him through on goal. I was taking on senior pros. Paul um, Paul Merson actually played, and he come off the pitch and he said, "That's one of the best performances I've ever seen." And he says, "What's your name?" I, I said to him, "I was absolutely delighted." He asked me, yeah. and he said, "That's unreal." Next day, I got off a pro. You said you said something clicked. So the first year YTS, you've got res- your responsibilities. You've been around the club. You're comfortable yeah. in the environment. What? Was was there not, uh, I guess, targets set by the no. coaches for you? No. You know, like yourself, you know. No, like, it wasn't like it is now. It, but but what? So when you say it clicked then, and things just became easy. Yeah. Were the coaches not about you saying you've got a real chance of getting no. in? There? So no. when that when that Chris Chris Turner, <coughs> at the time, who was my youth team coach, he he used to be on at me all the time, on at me all the time, and I, I used I used to hate it, like literally, I used to hate it, and. Obviously, when you when you get older and you, you you become more wiser, you know he's saying stuff to me because he know he can see potential in me, and um, literally, just things I was working on just came off. Well, things I used to work hard at just came off, and everything became easy. I was running past players. I was stronger than other people, even though my frame at the time I was slight, but I was strong. Yeah. Um, I was faster than other people and it just got easy. I was taking people on, creating chances for people and just starting enjoying my football like like I used to back in the day. Like It, it's, it's, it all came together. Because as a 17-year-old, being thrown in to a derby game against Blues, Blues yeah. you would be forgiven for you know being incredibly nervous. Yeah, I was nervous. I was nervous. I mean, even I, though you were confident in the way you were no, playing, I wasn't nervous. Like I was excited 
in the dressing room because I didn't know until the we kept we went into the dressing room. I, I just travelled. I got told I was travelling because I've been in and around the reserves for quite a while. Um, and playing reserve team football back then was something yeah. big. By the way, they, that weren't no like little deal like it is now. It, it's it was it was you know I actually thought something of it, and people used to think something of playing reserve team football back then. Um, so when I got I got chucked in with the first team on that weekend, so I had a mad week. I had a mad week, by the way, because I played youth team football, passed my driving test, had my best game ever for the reserves midweek. Got chucked into Blues, um, the Blues derby, live on Sky <laughs> on the next weekend, and it, like all that happened in one week, and I was just on cloud nine. So that that mad week, Mark McGee, how was he with you? How was because I, I played under Mark, yeah. But I was a, I was kind of what 26, 27 year old. So when well, the dialogue was yeah. very good anyway. Yeah. But with a young player coming through, managers don't really they can either kind of molly cuddle you, make sure that you're oh, right. Oh no, there's none of that. Cause it's old school way, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, just get get in, <clears throat> do what you've been so doing. So that whole week you had yeah. no idea. No idea what, at all. No dialogue between the ma- the no. first team manager. No. No and. I didn't even train with the first team at that point. Not on the Friday or nothing. No. no. So, um, literally, when we, when we were having the, having the team talk, hour and a half before the game in the dressing room, calls out my name on playing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I hear that? Bam, you're in. Brilliant. My team, my name weren't even in, in the program. I got the program at home. It's not even in the program. I guess though, in a way, did that. Is that like a way of stopping you from getting too nervous? Because you don't have time to get nervous. You just get thrown right into it. I don't know if it. I would have got nervous because it's football. I love football. It's what I do. Uh, you know, it's not scared nerves anyway. It's an excited yeah. nerves. So I, you know, but you I'm, can't overthink it. Cause no, you just you just have to go out and do what you do. No, it's just it was football. I just loved it. But when I was on that pitch, like I'm I'm playing next to Keith Curl. Who at the time is a legend, you know, in the game. He's outrageous defender, um, and he's got me <laughs> fully in with him because that's how that's how he had his players. He's like, "What right, you get in here?" And you know, it was brilliant. I couldn't hear myself for the first fifteen minutes of the game because it was it was a derby. Yeah, and I just couldn't hear. I, I, everything was new to me. That sort of crowd. 17, couldn't hear nothing. Couldn't hear anyone talking to me. I was just, I was just, I could have just been running around. Very much, I guess, ready for that for that moment. Obviously, you went on to make, what, 21 appearances yeah. in that. Got your first goal against Charlton. What was that like? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, this is something I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I remember um, he was out here and we had Charlton. Was it the FA Cup? Yeah. 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 And I remember Don, done his shuffle over the far side, and because I, you know, the Don shuffle, you <laughs> move his legs, you know the one. And then I thought this ball's coming in, and like win back at the time, you have to get in the box when he, when someone on the opposite side crosses it, you've got to be in the box. I yep. say we'll play the game. I say you play win backs, and I just seen a ball, unreal ball. And I've just got my head on it, far stick, headed it where it come back from. Boom, old striker days. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, up that. What a header, side netting on the fault. Didn't can, know, didn't know how to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> just can you feeling. remember what you did? Just arms out. <laughs> I got the picture. I got the picture at home. I look about ten on my picture at home. Because uh, it, yeah, it's brilliant. Because I say, you, you know, you scored in that FA Cup game. Um, that was the year that the team went on a great FA Cup run yeah. to the semi-final. Yeah, but you didn't play in the semi-final. Yeah. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Well, yeah. <laughs> We've got to bring these things up. Oh, that's um, horrible. You, why? Why were you not young. in the team? And the game's something to the club, isn't it? So, Cause it was sure. it A.D. Williams that came back in? Or was it no, Frogger. Tweet? Steve Frogger playing. Yeah, Frogger, yeah. You said you were young. What difference does it make if you're, if you're in, you're Monty playing well? Bros, didn't he, that... Could thought he could go and get a result. Because it's Arsenal and it's the Arsenal, experience. Yeah. It was what it is. He dropped, I think it was Keeney and Robbo at the time yeah. when we were all playing. I, th- 
think it, but he dropped Bully. Bully was on the bench as well. I think. Yeah, it was because um, we had done we had done Goodman in the other week, and yeah. <coughs> still a bone of contention Bully for a Claridge, lot of fans that Claridge and Goodman yeah. started that game. Yeah, it was it was actually quite weird that he changed everything up. I was a bit disappointed, but that's football. You just accepted it because you were young. Yeah, cool. You accept it anyway. Is it? Oh, <laughs> you can say. You can go into a manager and shout and ball and that, but there's, what good is it going to get? It's, it's, it's a nothing. So you just get on with your job. Because this is a, a kind of a, a key part, I guess, to your Wolves career, because um, if we kind of fast forward, you have cemented your place, you are the left back, and then it almost feels like, as we've gone through managers, more left backs keep coming into the club. And the one time that you are not in the team in your almost your entire Wolves career is that crazy four months or so when Dave Jones' team let promotion slip out from their grasp. 13 points in, was it 10 games left? But you weren't injured, you just didn't, weren't being picked at the time. No. Do you know why? I don't know, Mo Kamara came in and don't know whether he thought I needed a rest or... Yeah, but there's needing a rest and there's <coughs> the team not performing. And you, like you say, before Christmas, right up to Boxing Day, you're ever-present, weren't you? So Yeah, I, I don't know. Managers like to think different. I don't know. I've never been a manager, so I don't know. It's I don't know what he was thinking. You know, there was... Uh, there were times that when I thought... He had a good against me. Against me, um, I thought that for a very long time, um, and that's why I've seen a lot of left backs in at the club through my career at Wolves. You've seen them out though, didn't you? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as I said, I told you before, I back myself against anyone. I don't. Uh, it's something I'll never fear. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's my job to go and play football. It's what I want to do, and I weren't going to let anyone. Get in my way because I just I felt like I had the ability to be better than anyone else. Do you think how much do you think of that is down to the fact that you were an academy player? Because the season before you made fifty three appearances, you were player of the year, I think. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and I can't remember who it was. There was someone else who we've done the program with who kind of said um, Jack Price. Jack, <coughs> Jack Price said to us that you know he he always felt that he was an easy option to take out because he wasn't any manager who was here he wasn't their player because he was an academy player yeah uh, yeah uh, when, when a new manager comes in you, you know you, and he brings his own players in you, you're often seen as not their player and this and that um, yeah but that, that goes for any player that's not just academy player yeah yeah, yeah but it's but that, that that thing of you know because cause the club hasn't spent money on him so it's it's an easier that's what Jack Price said he felt that because the club hadn't spent money on him, yeah. that he was always an always yeah. an easy option to drop out of the team. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can you can say that, and I understand what what he's saying when he's saying that. Um, but I never felt I was an easy not an easy option to drop because I always felt like I had something to give. Um, Did you chap on? Pardon? Did you chap on? Did you go and speak to the manager? If... Yeah, I'd say like, why am I not playing and stuff like that? And, yeah. You know, there's a lot of cliche excuses managers give. In yeah. I mean, it, it's one of them, and you just have to accept it. Otherwise, you you're gonna get upset, and it's gonna start affecting your game. Um, but I mean, at the time when I come out of the team, I was I'm still young. I'm still very young, uh, minded as well in terms of you know, yeah. knowing I can go and knock the door down and say like, listen, I should be playing this, and I'd. I never would have done that at that age, never. Um, and I didn't have an agent at the time. I didn't have an agent really until I was 21, 22. Uh, so... Because you know. at that time, clubs, if, the, if, it was, if it was now, clubs would have been lined up to sign you, wouldn't they? I would have, I would have thought so, yeah. Especially the season I had, my player of the year season, yeah. Um... He was, he, he was an easy season for me. And even all the senior pros, 
like when when senior pros are coming up to you who've played at Premiership level, and saying like, "Yeah, you're moving on, mate. You, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that soon. So just keep what you're doing." When they start telling you stuff like that, you start believing it. And as you say, I'm just going about playing football. We ha- we have to talk about obviously the the promotion season. You know, again. Yeah. Ever present, scoring a couple of goals, a very important one in the semi final, the playoffs. Yeah. What do you remember about that that campaign? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> no, honest, no, we had a, an amazing group of players that got on. I mean, if we had a night out, fifteen lads would be there. Yeah, and we just had, you know, I thought we just had a great dressing room, um, and. That I think that took us all the way. Uh, I mean, we had a great run in at the end, which took us um, into the playoffs, and we went in on form. And soon as I knew, I knew we were going to get promoted the minute we beat Reading. As soon as we got, because I knew that was a tough, tough game. We, we always struggled against Reading. Yeah, I always knew it was a tough game. Always had to pull your sleeves up. But the minute we got past that, I knew it was ours. Because yeah. I've spoken to you before about the playoff final. Yeah. And because we did a video a while back um, when the Sir Jack statue was unveiled, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and because <laughs> I had to remind Nails about a lot of stuff that happened on that thing. Cause, yeah, I apologise. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but, but like, because it struck me at the time when we were talking, and I've talked to you about it other times as well, that like, you were like, well, I wasn't nervous because I knew we were going to win. Yeah, I just knew we were going to win. It was just any other game to you? Uh, honestly, I, I can't even remember the game. Like this, I, I, you always ask me. I don't. I can't remember anything about it. I'll be honest. I think that maybe because of the the stature of the game. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know. It just passed me by. Even now, like Big Matty will say something that happened in the game. I'm like, did it? <laughs> 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 like. Yeah, it was like the minute we came out to warm up on that playoff final, I just knew it was ours. Like the fans were already in the ground, none of their fans were in there. It was just bouncing straight before and just warming up, thinking, This is ours. I just knew it. Was it always was it always the dream to get to the Premier, Premier League? Yeah, always. When did it sink Play against in? The breath, when did the it sink breath. in after that? that? That's where you you achieved. Um, pre-season. When you came back. Yeah, when <coughs> players started coming in, um, and the amount of media and stuff that was around at the time, and things get bigger, and you know, it's, it's you're getting a lot more noticed about what you're doing for a living and all that. And it's just it it goes on tenfold, and that's when you start knowing that you're in the, you're in a big league. Yeah. But then, how do you cope with that? Because of of everything you'd been through as a group to get to the Premier League, to get to the Premiership as it was then, you were the only ever present in that season. But I missed Villa game. <laughs> one game, um, but you, um, it's five one at Blackburn on the opening day. Yeah, it was a tough beginning. 4-0. He was a doing Charlton. as well. Doing Charlton, Hurtles, Scott. Um, who was it now? Because it's then a defeat to Man United. It's a draw with Portsmouth. It's a defeat at Southampton. It's a heavy defeat at, against Chelsea. It like The dream quickly... Realisation, you're in yeah. the big league. Yeah, he's playing against good players. Playing against the best. Um, well, I just, I just I don't think we prepared properly in pre-season for the Premiership you said you said the, the promotion campaign about the, the group of players yeah. 15 players turning it out yeah. the start that you had in the Premier League yeah. that that group of players you know it's, it's still important that is a yeah. big a big factor yeah. but it's it's low confidence isn't it if yeah getting... I mean I mean we had some Whole, some old successful heads in the, in, in the team yeah. and uh, it just wasn't enough I don't I just 
I, I don't think we worked hard enough pre-season. I'll be honest. I don't think that pre-season got us ready for the Premier League. Because Dave Jones will always say, I guess, that there wasn't enough money spent on the team. Is that fair? I think every manager was going to say that, didn't they? Uh, so do you think there was still enough quality and experience in the group? I, I just don't, yeah, I don't think... Um, structurally, as a team, we, we we prepared enough to see games as what they were and who we were playing against and tactics were... I just don't think they were right. Come on, give us a bit more then. How? So pre-season, it's down, you're saying ex experienced, successful heads. Yeah, I just... You know I mean, yourself, yeah. as a player, you wanted to get to the Premier League all your days. You, you'll yeah. be fit as, fit as a fiddle. Most players will come back, Premier League, fit. Now, any game, and you know, it's down to the players on the pitch that go yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say tactically, if a manager says, and I've been on, I've been on the pitch when a manager said this, and the captains went, "That's not happening. We're doing this." Yeah. But you said they don't. I just, I just don't think we, a lot of the times we were set up for the teams we were playing against. I think, you know, there's a lot of times where you're playing a formation where too defensive or no. So what is that? Is that down to is is the manager then getting? Because the expectation of fans, you know, everyone talks about the brand of football today, but you have to just do whatever it takes to get the yeah, result. Yeah, I think it, it was just go out and play. That's what was said. It weren't, you know, all right, this, 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 and this. You, this is your job there. This is your job there. Um, you know, so it that, wasn't that, tactical that, enough. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's my personal view. Because how do you? I don't know. Because I'm, I'm sitting saying right, it's a Premier League, right? And everyone's knowledge in the Premier League and the players, what their strengths, what their weaknesses yeah. are. Yeah. You know, you know when you're playing against a Chelsea, you know what their strengths are. You, you know, know as a how player you're put, playing yeah. against that. Yeah. So when the manager says, "All right, he shouldn't have to say, yeah. right, this is your responsibility there.' Because yeah. you know, you know, like you say, I'm going to be up against such and such. I know what he's going okay. to want to do. Okay. Let me tell you this then. So. From the ages of 18, I never really got coached at Wolves. Right. Until Glenn Oddle walked in the door. And that was a good while after. Yeah, I know this, yeah. So, so you tell me, why wasn't I coached? Well, you look at it right and you think about, I think, I think you should be coached right up until the end of your career. Yes, I think you're still correct, learning. Yeah. But I think a lot of a lot of kind of expectation responsibility on managers now is just to get the result. Yeah. And I I think the responsibility of a manager today is to improve the player individually and as a collective. Yeah, so no, I, I, so I they agree, have to yeah. coach. If you're yeah. not a coaching manager, you bring in a staff yeah. that coaches the player. Yeah. But you're not you're dodging my question. What's what's the dodge? So you're saying that tactically they, they weren't prepared oh, enough. Prepared and, no. But you yourself. What if you had weaknesses? It's still your responsibility to go to a coach and say, "Look, ah, let's work at this and work at this." Do you not think? No matter what age you're. Uh, yeah, you should, you I'm should, not coming you, for you here. I'm just. Uh, I'm no, just... it's good. Good point. You, you should. You should say that. It's okay. I mean, yeah, you, you you've got your own person responsibility to to be better as a as a pro and yeah. and stuff like that. But you know, I'm still young and I'm still playing. Football week, first team football week yeah. in week out, and just going through my, going through life as it's you know it's, it's passing me by. I bet you you were your own worst critic, the same as all footballers are. You'd of come course. if you had a bad game, you'd come off and think I can do this. I no one needed to tell me I was bad. No one needed to tell me I played a bad ball because I, I'd already killed myself over it. Right. Um, but at the same time, if I'm if I need a bollocking, tell me. Yeah. I ain't scared of a bollocking. No, like tell me. I'll take it on the chin. Yeah. Um, and I had a few through my career, but, you know, I'm, I'm someone who you could bollock and you you get probably a little bit, little bit more out of me. Um, but, you know, as I say, in the Prem, I just don't think we were ready. Right. Is that your biggest regret from your time at Wolves? 
What because you were local, you playing were local. Premier League football. Well, no, but the way it turned out in the Premier League, because you oh, the, the, local oh, you boy, my, my dream. I oh, achieved something I set out as a young kid. I, I said like they made me fulfil my dream. I've got I've got to ask you then. So relegation. Yeah, okay, it's not nice. You're not in the Premier League anymore, but yep. you, you, like you say, you missed. Was it just one game? But on yep. the rest, you're you're involved. Well, I, in. I was. I, I came on. Right. But I didn't start. Yeah, so you're involved. Yeah. You're involved in every match. Yeah. There's got to be teams coming in. That's that's often you the Premier League again. What what made you what made you stay? I didn't know if they did, <laughs> but this is what I mean. This is why. Um. I think, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why things happened through my career why things probably didn't happen or did, did happen as I say I was just I was here I was happy uh, most of the time um, and it come to a stage when I did actually leave that I felt I needed to um, because I wanted to better my career we and are going to talk a lot more about this on our podcast, uh, which will be available to download from all the usual places. It also includes uh, Chris Oelamo's rant about Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo because Lee Naylor has played against them both. So make sure you download that podcast and you can hear how angry this man gets about the debate that we had on our podcast, which is available, as I say, from iTunes, from Spotify, lots of other places as well we're going to continue this discussion and much more with Lee Naylor including the rundown as well so make sure you download that podcast thank you very much for watching the old gold club powered by Wolverhampton building supplies with Mikey Burrows and Chris Iwalumo